Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com, and today as we continue talking about getting organized in Photoshop, we're going to take a look at the layers palette. But to abstract the idea a bit, let's just look at these random objects. None of them have names, and they're all spread across the field. And if my task was to organize this, one thing I could do would be to name every object. So then it would be very easy to identify what's what. Now, another option would be a little bit quicker. Instead, I could just make folders, or you could think of them as buckets, name the buckets, and then put the corresponding objects inside of the buckets. Now, I don't need to name the objects themselves in this scenario because I have enough buckets with enough specificity that the objects inside of them are pretty easy to figure out. And so when you think about this from a list standpoint, we've gone from a bunch of objects down to relatively fewer buckets. And so this is just easier to navigate. Well, here is the exact same idea, and this is the challenge we're facing in Photoshop. Here's a pretty standard document. I've got a whole bunch of layers, many of which are impossible to tell based on the layer thumbnail. Now the lowest one here, background, it's big enough that we can see it, but the others are all very small. So I could name them, or I could put them into folders, and I prefer to put them into folders. So one way to do that is just to select the various layers that you want. Here are all the blue potions, and then you can right click and say group from layers, and that allows you to name it. Now you can do the same thing with the red ones here, and I can even do it with a keyword shortcut. So that, once again, makes things a little bit faster. So now we have something that's much more usable. We have four items and a background, although if we expand them, we can see that the individual layers are not actually named. Now much more realistically, you have something like this. It's just an illustration. But you see here, I still have groups, and in fact, the groups are now color-coded. So let's take a look at how I've broken this down. I have an orange group here, which are lines. And so anytime I make a new layer inside of this lines group, it already is automatically orange. I have the same thing here with masks. And these are just things that I can control click on the thumbnail and quickly get a selection, sort of like a saved selection, something I talk about in other videos. But the point is, I have a bunch of layers in here, none of which are really named, but it's easy to keep track of them because of color coding and because of layer groups. Well, so where did this all come from? Why is red masks and orange lines, yellow lighting? Well, this was just a system that I developed over the years. Now, remember how in the previous video we talked about building a system that suits your needs? Well, that's exactly what this is. In fact, I'd encourage you to not copy my system, at least not arbitrarily. Think of a system that works for you based on the way that you're already drawing, and then just give it a little bit of a standardization so that you always do it in the same way. So I've got my named layer groups and they're color coded, but you might be asking, well, isn't that a lot of work? Wouldn't it be easier to just start painting and kind of organize as you go? Well, let me take this new document as an example. And actually we're gonna think back to the idea of my little template guide for my sketchbook. What I wanted is the best of both worlds. I want the nice clean structure, but I don't want all the work. So what I did was once again, built myself a template. Now this time it takes the form of a Photoshop action. So if I start a painting and I want this structure, all I do is play the action, which I've mounted to a keyboard shortcut. And there you go. That was not sped up for editing purposes. That was in real time. In fact, I could put all of those inside of a group. Maybe this would be character one. We'll hide him for a minute. Make another group here, group two and I can play that action again, and there you go. So here I actually have two instances of that whole folder hierarchy, and it didn't take any time or effort. And just like before, if I were to make extra, we'll say, line work layers, I just add them in here and they automatically adopt the color from the group. So there's nothing set in stone about the particulars of my system, other than just it's nice to use layer groups. I would say that pretty much applies to everyone. But for you, I recommend figuring out a personal system that kind of highlights what you're already doing. So if your layer palette is messy, think about what sorts of either naming or layer groups you could use to just clean it up. You will be so much happier while you're working. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.